Hi, I'm Daniel Elegante. Jennifer Dasinger and I have spent a lot of time teaching chemistry and getting things wrong. And in doing things wrong, we figured out what works right. So the strategies that we've put together, the lessons we've put together, the resources we've put together are just there to make you the best teacher you can be and to do the best by your kids. We want the kids working hard. We want the kids struggling a little bit so they can learn that struggle is real in the world and that struggle is good. But we also want to be supportive of the students and supportive of you as a teacher. So in this first activity, Canister Conundrum, our goal is to give you something to get the kids doing something so that you're not just lecturing. The kids do an activity, you circulate around, you help out where you need to, but it's all about active learning in that 5E model. So as you involve yourself in these lessons in the next few days, just realize that these lessons and resources really do work and that the Marzano strategies are time-tested and data-proven ways to do better by your students. And at the end of the day, the job I'm doing as a teacher is all about the kids. And I think it's that way for all of us. This is the equipment you need for canister conundrum. A simple balance, a couple paper clips, and also some canisters. Now, for paper clips, if you're the nice teacher, they can all be the same size, all one size. If you like to give your students problems, it's fun to pick out different sizes. Here's the idea. You give each group a canister, and in that canister is a certain number of paper clips. You say, this one has seven paper clips, and this one has three paper clips, and this one has two paper clips. They should all be the same type of canister. So you can use a film canister, or you can use the bottles, but you shouldn't mix and match unless you really want to try and drive your students nutso. The idea is you pick up three paper clips, you put them in the canister. So you hand them the canister and you say, this is three paper clips. They put it on the balance, they record the mass, 9.52 grams, and then they can go trade data with other groups, or you could give each group a set of canisters, each with a different number of known paper clips. Then you give them, here is one with an unknown number of paper clips. And this is their job. They have to figure out how to use a graph to find out the mass of the canister and the number of paper clips in the unknown canister. Very easy to set up. If you like to be slightly mean to your students, in the unknown, give them big ones and small ones. And what they will see in the data is an outlier. Or in one of the known values, give them big ones and little ones. And when they graph it, they'll get one canister that's slightly heavier than it should be. And then they can attempt to explain. The goal here is to get the kids thinking about what can graphs tell them, to give them some practice in graphing, and also to get them to use their minds to think. We want the students to be the hardest working person in the room, and we want the teacher being supportive of their students and helping them with productive struggle. We want the students to not just want the right answer, we want the students to find the right answer. Once you've collected your canister conundrum data, then you'd want to make a graph. Being able to draw a graph and use the graph to analyze the data is a very important skill for students. It used to be that Microsoft Excel was out of the reach of most students, but now using Google Sheets, you can make a graph in no time flat. So the first thing you wanna do is open up a new spreadsheet, which I have here. The very first column that you put in is always the X axis. So I'm gonna make this number of paper clips because that was the data that we knew about each canister and then the mass. I have five and seven and nine and 11 and 13 in my sample. And for the mass, I had 10.73 grams, 12.76 grams, 16.24 grams, 
You want to make sure that you don't put grams in here because it doesn't know what to do with letters, just numbers. I had 17.38 grams and 18.88 grams. Once you've got the data in, then it's just a matter of highlighting that data, clicking on insert, chart. It's going to ask you what type of chart you'd like. And for the type of chart, you're going to want to pick XY scatter. And notice that it gives you a series of dots and number of paper clips down at the bottom. And then under customize, what you're going to want to do under series, you can come down and click trend line. And when you click trend line, you can come down here and say show R squared if you want to. It's not necessary, but if you're interested in doing a linear regression, you can. And then under label here, I'm going to pick use equation. What that does is give me a graph. That shows a correlation between the data points gives me my slope intercept formula and it would also give me my R squared value if I wanted that. The R squared value is simply a matter of the closer it is to one, the more of a good fit a straight line is to the data. So if you had to come back in and add the trend line later, you would just double click the graph under customize series, scroll down, and you could use that R squared and notice I'm very, very close. In the video, I mentioned that you can mess with your students by using big paper clips and small paper clips. So here is a data point that this canister actually had a couple big paper clips. And the idea here is that the students should be able to explain what could have caused this error. The students, you also could have used half of a paper clip, maybe you cut one out, in which case the dot would have ended up down here. But the students need to be able to analyze problems and come up with possible answers. If the student wants to change anything else, or if you want to change anything else about the data, it's just a matter of clicking on it and you can change what color the line is. You can also change what color the individual points are so that you make them as fancy or as simple as you want them to be.